Hi, this is Marwa, and today we will be discussing a new concept, which is radical expressions. We will see how we can simplify radical expressions through a group of examples that I hope could be clear for you. This is the first video about this concept, but we will have more to come. Let's look at our first example here. Before we go through the example, I just want you to see the standard form of a radical, radical expression. Now, for us to understand, this here is what we call the radical sign. We used to say it's a square root, but it's not always a square root. So this is the radical sign. Above the radical sign here is what we call the index. And below the radical sign, we have what we call the radicand. So here we have radical sign, the index is 3, the radicand is negative 8. It's important that you understand this vocabulary because you might see it in a header of a question and you won't know what exactly does it require. So again, we said this is a radical sign. The number above it is an index. So 3 here is the index and negative 8 is the radicand. Now let's look through our examples here to understand how actually do we simplify these. This example is all made of numbers, but the next one is going to be of variables. So you need to understand the details of this. It says here, what is each real number root? Now, real root, we're looking only for real roots. There are other imaginary roots that we're not asking for here. So the first question is asking you for the cubic root of negative 8. Now, it's obvious that you need to find the number you multiply by itself three times to get negative 8. Well, that number is negative 2. So negative 2 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by negative 2. That would give me negative 8. So the answer for this question is negative 2 which is obvious and easy. One answer. Now, if I want to find the square root of 0 0.04, I'm looking for the number that I multiply by itself twice to get 0 0.04. Well, the square root is actually as if we have a 2 here, but it doesn't show. We don't write it. Same way we don't write the power of 1 when we're dealing with exponents. So I'm looking for the number I multiply by itself twice to get this. So obvious 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.2 will give me 0 0.04 so my answer here is 0 0.2 which is correct however there is another root if i multiply negative 0 0.2 by negative 0 0.2 you are still going to get 0 0.04 so which answer do i write or do i write both of them well let's agree on something 0 0.2 here is the positive root for this question. Negative 0 0.2 is the negative root. We call the positive root the principal root. We call it the principal root. The negative root is just called the negative root. If they are giving you this question, they are asking for the principal root only. So your answer should be 0 0.2. You don't write the negative 0 0.2. If they want the negative solution for this, they can write the expression like that, negative square root of 0 0.04, which is negative 0 0.2. Now, again, I know that it could confuse you a little. You know that the square root of 0 0.04 has two solutions, 0 0.2 and negative 0 0.2. However, you need to understand that these two solutions, one of them, the positive solution is called the principal solution, and this is the solution, the obvious solution that you write when you see something like that. The other negative solution is not required if you're simplifying unless you have a negative sign outside the root. The other case where you should be writing both if they are asking you to find all real number roots. So if the question says find all real number roots, you're gonna find you're gonna write both positive and negative. But if the question says what is each real number root? You're going to write the positive solution or the principal solution in case you have a radical like that. If they want the negative solution, they're going to write you a negative outside. I hope this is understandable for you. Now, let's move on. If I need the fourth root of negative 1, well, there is no real number that I can multiply by itself four times and get negative 1. Because when you multiply any number by itself four times, it's going to be positive times positive times positive times positive. Your answer is positive. If I'm multiplying positive four times, 
positive times positive times positive well my answer is positive if I'm multiplying negative by negative by negative by negative well my answer is still positive so regardless if you are going to multiply positive numbers or you're going to multiply a negative number by itself four times in both cases you'll get positive so there is no real solution for this there is no number negative number that has a fourth root or any even root if it's an odd root it works like that but if it's an even root like the index here is an even number it does not work your answer in this case is going to be no real solution now the last question here we need the square root of negative 2 squared well negative 2 squared is 4 Negative 2 times negative 2 equal 4. So the square root of, neg of 4 is actually 2. So you're going to write the positive solution only again, not the negative solution. Why not? Because they asked you for each real root, and this here indicates the principal root or the positive root only. Now, having understood that, we will move into variables. Now, for variables, we have something else to take in mind. This rule here says for any real number a, which is the radicand you're going to have under this the radical the nth root of a to the power of n is equal to a if n is odd absolute value of a if n is even what does that mean the square root of x square well there are two solutions here why because x multiplied by x is equal to x square and also negative x multiplied by negative x is equal to x square so I know I have two solutions. And in case we have variables, we're not only looking for principal solution like we do with numbers. Actually, we are looking for both solutions. So instead of writing positive and negative x, which doesn't really make sense because this is a variable, we write absolute value of x. Absolute value of x means there is two solutions, one positive and one negative. So this is in case n is even because this is squared. What about if it's odd? Well, the cubic root of x cube is equal to x only. Why? Because x multiplied by x multiplied by x is x cubed, which is fine. However, negative x multiplied by negative x multiplied by negative x is negative x cubed. Because negative negative is positive, multiply by negative again, you're going to get a negative solution. So if n or the index is odd, you have only one solution. So we write x. If the index is even, like in this case here, this is as if it's 2, then you have two solutions. When you have two solutions, positive and negative, we write them as absolute value. Now let's apply this rule for us to solve the questions we have here. Now for the first question, I want to find the square root of 16x to the power of 8. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. It's a number, we take the principal root only. Now, x to the power of 8, its square root is x to the power of 4. Why? Because I'm asking you for which number to multiply by itself twice to get x to the power of 8. So my answer here is x to the power of 4. Now, because this is a square root, we know that we have two solutions, positive and negative, for the variable at least. So we put that in absolute value. Let's look at our next question. Now, I'm looking for the cubic root of a to the power of 6, b to the power of 9. Cubic root of a to the power of 6 is a to the power of 2. Cubic root of b to the power of 9 is b cubed. Now, if you don't see this obvious, well, this is as if you're dividing the powers. Like, if I divide 6 by 3, I'll get 2. If I divide 9 by 3, I'll get 3. I am actually dividing, and this is what you can see when we write radicals in exponential form. Now, do I have one or two solutions? Only one solution. So a squared, b cubed, and that is our answer. In this question here, we need the fourth root of x to the power of 8, y to the power of 12. Well, x, the fourth root of x to the power of 8 is x squared. And the fourth root of y to the power of 12 is y cubed. And because this is even, I'm going to put this in absolute value. Now, this makes sense and looks nice applying the rule. However, there is one more thing to it. I'm trying just to take this to you one step at a time so you don't get confused. But there is more to this. 
What else do I need to do? I need to see how reasonable my answer is, like 4x to the power of 4 in the absolute value. Why did I put it in the absolute value? Because I said that there is a possibility that x could be positive or x could be negative. But x, if x is positive or negative, it has an even power. If it has an even power, it means I'm, my answer is going to be positive anyway. So after I look at this, after I find this, I need to check for the power. If the power of is even, it means it's going to be positive anyway. So there is no need for the absolute value. Your answer here is going to be 4x to the power of 4. And this is it. This is the simplest form. Now, why did we do this from the start? Because sometimes we will need it. Then our next step will be to simplify it like that. Now, if it's an odd root, like in this case, if the index is odd, well, I don't have an absolute value. There is no need for me to simplify. Now, in this case, I have an absolute value. I'm going to look at it again. Well, x is squared. So regardless, x is positive or negative, my answer is going to be positive. So I can take actually x squared out of the absolute value. There is no way it's going to be negative. y is cubed. So if y is positive, the answer will be positive. If y is negative, the answer will be negative. So actually y should stay inside the absolute value and this is the simplest form. Now again, we will take care and take in consideration if my index is positive, sorry, is even or odd. If the index is even, then I need an absolute value. If the index is odd, I don't need an absolute value. After I write the absolute value, I need to take a look at the power inside the absolute value or the exponent. If the exponent is even, my answer is going to be positive anyway, then I don't need the absolute value. But if it's odd, like in this case, it could be positive or could be negative depending on the value of y. So it stays inside the absolute value. Now I'm going to give you practice questions. I want you to look at these questions. Hopefully you did understand everything we said. Pause the video for now and try to solve them yourself. And check after you're done solving by resuming the video if you got the right answers or not. So I'll just give you a minute. Now, if you have solved, you should be able to check your answers. If I want the square root of 16x squared, applying everything we know, well, it's going to be 4, and the, the square root of x squared is x. And because this is an even index, I'm going to put that inside an absolute value. I'm going to check, do I have even powers? No, I don't. So this is the final answer. Next question. Well, the index is odd, so I have only one solution. Cubic root of 27 is 3. And the cubic root of y to the power of 6 is y squared. And this is my answer. No need to simplify anything. I have a fourth root here. So I do need an absolute value. Well, the fourth root of x to the power of 20 is x to the power of 5. And the fourth root of y to the power of 27, sorry, 28, is y to the power of 7. And because this is an even index, I'm going to put that in an absolute value. Is any of those even so I can take it out of the absolute value because it's going to be a positive answer anyway? No. So this is your simplest form. Next, I need the fifth root. So no absolute value. Fifth root of 32 is 2. Fifth root of y to the power of 10 is y squared. This is your final answer. Last question. Fourth root again. So I do need an absolute value. Fourth root of x to the power of 12 is x cubed. Fourth root of y to the power of 16 is y to the power of 4. Right, after I put everything inside the absolute value, I'll check for even exponents. Well, this is odd, stays in the absolute value. This is even. Your answer is going to be positive anyway, so I can actually take it out of the absolute value. Now, I hope this now seems a lot easier for you and you understand what you do. Hopefully, we can explain further questions that are a little more complicated, but in our next video. Thanks for watching.